to promote the rights of girls and mobilize them for development and participation through research, education and action, oriented programs directed towards dear empowerment. We are GPI, that's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. We are GPI, yeah, that's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. To promote the rights of girls and mobilize them for development and participation through research, education and action, oriented programs. Directed to words, dear empowerment, we are GPI. That's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. We are GPI, yeah, that's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. We are GPI, that's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. We are GPI, that's what we are. Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are. Gender inequality acknowledges that men and women are not equal and that gender affects any individual's living experience. These differences arise from distinctions in biology, psychology, and cultural norms. Some of these distinctions are empirically grounded, while others appear to be socially constructed. To address the issues of gender inequality, Bene Madunagu and Brace Osakwe came up with the idea of Girls Power Initiative, GPI, a non-government organization to empower children and young females with accurate information and skills from a gender perspective for self-reliance and social action. Bene Madunagu and I co-founded Girls Power Initiative in 1993 and uh, we commenced our activities in 1994. Our decision to start GPI came from our background in the women's movement. We were both members of uh, Women in Nigeria, a foremost feminist organization, working to make a change in the positions and conditions of women in the 1980s and the 90s. That year, we did a review of the progress we had made as WIN, and we're happy we had made progress. WIN had become a household word, but we were also not happy because so much effort had gone in, and what came out of those efforts were not um, satisfactory to Benny and I. So we started thinking of how can we do it differently? How can we impact faster? And came up with this idea of catching girls young for gender equality. So in 1993, at the International Women's Health Conference in Uganda. We had enough time together to come up with different names of a soon-to-be-born organization. And we had the opportunity to share our ideas with Andra Ivan, then of the International Women's Health Coalition. Uh, we presented several names to her and she picked Girls Power Initiative and said, this, this sounds powerful. Since we want to catch girls young, it speaks directly to it. When we started our sessions with the girls in August, it became apparent that the girls' needs were different from the vision we had in mind. 
the girls from their contributions it was very apparent that what they desired was sexuality education with the success recorded by gpi in benin and calabar centers there was need to open centers in abuja the federal capital territory asaba delta state and uyo Ibom state just for initiative delta state has been in existence since 2003 we uh, it started with, uh, with outreach in different schools before going on to launch a center and we had some challenges and one of the major challenges was the fact that people really didn't know what GPI was about. They didn't know what we were doing and they were very skeptical and some of them were resisting, uh, 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 resisting the change, they, they, preventing their, they prevented their daughters from attending GPI. But we're able to overcome this by constantly educating them on what GPI is, what we do in GPI, and um, going on visitation. We do, we usually, then we used to go to different girls' houses to tell them about GPI and listen to what they have to say about their daughters, about the organization, and about how we can better work with them and their daughters. Recently, GPA Calabar Center marked the 25th anniversary. We did it together with our 23rd annual graduation ceremony, which is an annual event that um, sent forth the girls into the community for them to continue to spread the information of GPI to, um, to their peers, immediate environment and others they come in contact with. So the celebration was a huge success. Why did I say so? First, because of the, the turnout. The turnout was so impressive and not just the turnout, the caliber of persons that graced that occasion. It was a very huge occasion that um, actually publicized GPI the more because so many people came home we were like, ah, GPI, you're 25, you're 25, wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. And for we, that was another good way of publicizing ourselves. Another high point of the occasion was um, certifying our graduates, peer educators. This year, we had about um, 60 of them, close to 60 of them who were certified peer educators. We also have... Um, beneficiaries of our entrepreneurial skills training who also graduated um, in their numbers and we also had beneficiaries of um, the safe space lessons at Akpabu. Akpabu is a, a local government a little bit far from Kalabata who um, also graduated so that was few of the activities that made it very successful and very unique. It's been wonderful working with GPI. Every day has been a learning process for me. Meeting with the girls, talking with them has been an amazing opportunity for me. I really thank GPI for giving me this opportunity. I've been, I always love to speak and to interact with the adolescents and it has been a wow thing for me. The GPI Abuja Center is as a result of the passion which I got from the volunteering scheme because I came into the Abuja Center as a liaison office in terms of administrative duties and I felt that gap in not having to interact with adolescent girls which I was familiar with and fond of doing with in the, in the center in Benin. This brought up our outreach activities and we began the holiday program which is in its second year this helped us to get girls for our center activities. Currently, we're in our second year in the center activities, and the outcome so far has been, has been tremendous, and it gives me this sense of relief to know that that which we never thought of is bringing bearing forth flowers already. Girls for Initiative, we started far back in 2011, not till now, we are still having the center program and the outreach program with facilitators and volunteers and our girls. So we do we have counseling sessions with the girls. 
We have skill training session with the girls and we have the empowering program. The lesson with the girls, we, the exchange, we give them ideas, suggestions and they ask questions. They share experience and we give our ideas to them how to sort, go about problems, issues affecting them. So, we started from lesson to lesson, building our curriculum. Um, three months, by the time we were having our first uh, workshop, by the end of 1994, from the discussions and the contributions with girls, we knew we had begun a path on sexuality education. Fortunately, one of our board members, Peju Olukoya, was very vast in that direction. She was running an organization, Women's Health Organization of Nigeria then. One of our very close friends, Nike Eshet of Action Health Incorporated Lagos, was also running an adolescent-focused organization that had sexuality education as part of its strategy. So, with support of uh, further discussions with Peju and uh, Nike, we continued and then came up with a sexuality education curriculum with gender and human rights as cross-cutting issues. We realized that yes, sexuality education, that was all the girls needed, but what they needed to be able to put into use even the information they were getting through sexuality education were gender-related issues gender and human rights. So by the end of um, 1997, we had come up with a three-year unique sexuality education curriculum we call Comprehensive Sexuality Education Curriculum with Gender and Human Rights as Cross-Cutting Issues. We have families who have come here to learn from us. We have ministries that have learned from us. And we have worked together with other people to put what we do in GPI in, on, uh, into book form. So this is called its all one curriculum. It's the guideline for a unified approach to sexuality, gender, HIV, and human rights education. We produce it in conjunction with other institutions in other continents, in the USA, in Europe, and uh, when we say USA, beyond USA, to the Americas itself, because we have Mexico in the field. So it's my pleasure to present both the curriculum, this is the guidelines, and these are activities. When countries want to do what we do, they look here and select the topic they wish to use from here. And then, in order to do it well, they also select the activities from here. So I'm presenting both the guidelines and the, and the activities to our teachers from our respective schools this afternoon. Our first set of graduates in GPI were in 1997. The first set of graduates that used that curriculum, they developed it, they, their needs addressed what uh, was contained in the curriculum. And since then, that has been the tradition of GPI. Every set of girls bringing new content into the curriculum such that today what we have as our comprehensive sexuality education curriculum is actually a curriculum that contains what the girl needs to know that she has nowhere else to learn, whether at home or in school. They are essential to her having a voice, so they become a part of the curriculum. Life skills, health information, issues of uh, anatomy and physiology, issues of health, sexual and reproductive rights, human rights, name it. If and when to be a parent, name it. Time management, they are all part of the GPI curriculum today. Graduates of GPI, including a spouse, and intern shares the experience on the impact and transformation. GPI has empowered me on being a girl child and 
they've empowered me with rights and skills. They've taught me about my my rights as a woman, on how I should be independent on myself and have that self-confidence that every girl child should have. GPI has taught me about my body image and how to create my values. I could remember our center meetings on how we did them. It was so fun that sometimes we would really not want to break into our classes. We, I was normally the chair for most meetings and my repertoire sometimes was favor. I remember her very well. We, we had our meetings were normally like most club meetings. We adjourned and we adopted the minutes. We had a minute book that we read. Before breaking into classes, we, also, we always sang the GPI anthem before, before going into our various classes. Sometimes we did skills acquisition, skills. So we learned different skills on how to bake or on how to make beads different skills. I learned a lot of things from those times. We also had the dance and singing session. It was just very fun. We really did not feel like quitting. If we could remain and go through those times again, we would gladly do so. GPI has, has actually done a lot. You know, before I came into this beautiful organization, I used to be very passive and aggressive at the, at the same time. But the first year, uh, before I attained the three years centrality education, I got into GPI and the knowledge and this organization actually helped me build my capacity at different levels. GPI made me as an individual, as a young girl, as of that age, I'm pretty young, but I was quite tender then, to be assertive, not to be passive or aggressive, to make, take informed decisions that will be of benefit to me and not just me and the society at large and those persons at home, people that I communicate with, I have a way of influencing them positively. But when I got into GPI, I had this passion for the TV, the television screen. So when I got into GPI, that was the year they decided that, oh, we're going to start up a TV program, a television program. And being the assertive young girl that I am, GPI picked me and that was it. I, I started running the GPI's television program together with some other assertive girls in GPI. That built my confidence, that built my self-esteem. It actually developed me in different ways. Well, today, the skills I've learned from GPI, the knowledge I have learned from GPI has been benefit, beneficial to me, not just to me, like I said earlier, to the society at large. I am a journalist today. All kudos to Girls Spa Initiative. My name is Amala to Success, and I'm a graduate of GPI 2019 sets. Being a GPI girl really helped me a lot. My dad introduced me to GPI. It was easy, actually, because he just said, so I said, get ready and go to GPI. But I felt it was stress. But when I came to GPI, it was like I was at home because I felt so relaxed. Everything they taught me that day was just, I, want, in short, I wanted to come the next day. And even now that I'm a graduate, I wish I was still coming to GPI. Wherever I go, I always feel different. The reason is because there is this zeal that GPI has given to me. There is this feeling I have when I'm, whenever I'm around somebody that, okay, let me just say that I have the information they don't. I was a GPI girl when I was really quite young. And I think one of the major things that GPI did for me was uh, help me build my self-confidence, help me believe in myself and know that I can be anything I want to be, I can do anything I want to do. You just, you just believe in yourself like nothing can hold you back and I was never afraid to use my voice. Although yes, I met her as a GPI girl already. I think one of the one of the fantastic qualities she has as a person is her self-confidence and self-worth. 
she's someone that um, if for example I need somebody to represent me anywhere I don't need to give her prior notice I can walk away because I know based on who she is she always handle whatever needs to be handled when it comes to family so that's one of the key qualities apart from a whole list of others it developed a consciousness in me that everywhere I was, I was able to observe my environment and see things happening around me. And when I feel it's not normal, I'm not afraid to speak up and desire to change it if it needs to be changed. I, I grew up to believe that my voice was everything. Yes, clearly. Um... From what I've observed from the teachers of GPI, it gives assertiveness, it gives um, the feeling of self-worth, it gives confidence, and um, there's, in quotes, know thyself. For those that actually embrace what GPI teaches, it makes you know who you are. Parents also have stories to tell about GPI. I got to know about GPI in 1998 through the coordinator. We were transferred from wherever we were to Imaguero College. That was where we got to know each other. We became friends and uh, she talked about GPI. And I loved what she said about GPI. And I introduced it to my children and two of them started GPI. They are bold to talk. When they have issues that they, um, that they are interested in, that they want to talk about, they know when to say it and they know how to say it. And they are also uh, children that I can rely on. Like when they started coming to GPI, I was no longer afraid of pregnancy, of one disease or the other. I just want to return another praise also after God to GPI. She has really made me proud. In everything in life, she has changed. Like earlier before what she is. But now, since she joined GPI, she has completely changed. In terms of her academic also, she's wonderful. I mean, this is wonderful. Look at it. In mathematics, she scored A. English, credit. As I speak to you now, almost three schools, they are looking for this girl to be, to be one of their students. Look at what she did for me. She said, happy birthday, daddy. In a, in a, in a, in one, in a wonderful way, she created this for me and which I so much appreciate. It's been awesome meeting so far, awesome experience so far, attending the GPI program. Well, since she started attending the GPI, I have noticed her social life has improved. When she's able to express herself, especially being in a public school where you meet with other people, unlike when she was coming from a private school, you know, she's always timid. Once she's not in the midst of her classmate, that small circle in the private school, she, she, she withdraws. But since she started attending GPI in a public school where she meets with other people, I notice she leads. Anytime she's within her circle of friends, she tends to lead them. She's outspoken. She's, is, she's more friendlier. She has really improved in her social life. We have thousands of girls who have also graduated from our school outreach programs. When we found that our centers could not accommodate all the girls who, desi who desired to be members of GPI, we had to develop outreaches in schools where we have GPI clubs and they have members. We fashioned our three-year curriculum, we fashioned out a one-year abridged curriculum from it which we use in running our sexuality education within these schools for girls only. And 
we have produced over 10,000 of such uh, uh, graduates from our school programs. And then when the girls graduate from the school program, some of them come to the center to do two more years so that they have this certificate from the center uh, activities. It's been wonderful. GPI has come to stay in this school. We started here in this school about three years ago, coordinating students, girls, child, and then teaching them how to be a proper girl and how to future in the society. Then we teach them how to develop themselves and have a self-worth as a girl child and then how to function in the society as a girl child. And we have um, several children that have passed through the GPI here in the school and uh, a lot of them have had meaningful life after being a, a partaker in the program of the girl child here in the school. What is the prerequisite to becoming a GPI girl? It's just your, a consent from either of your parents or a guardian and then a passport photograph. Registration is free. All you need to do is just to come down to the center with your passport photograph. You'll be given a form to fill. And after registration, what we do is we divide the girls into various groups according to their ages. Why do we do this? This is to enable us give age appropriate information and also make them to be comfortable with their peers for them to be able to share issues and concerns and challenges they face as young people. So for us, we feel that that is very key for learning to take place, for sharing to take place and for them to be even comfortable. So that is why we call it safe space lessons. Because when they are with their peers, they will feel free to interact, ask questions, and share. So that is how we do it. What other programs does GPI have? The programming in all GPI centers are the same. But depending on the problem prevalent in that particular state, we may have additional program to the normal program. So beyond our center programs for our three years uh, for the for the girls who are registered for the center program we have outreaches in the schools we have programs for parents programs for siblings programs for friends of GPI we have programs that involve both the center girls and the girls in the outreaches and their friends which we call the youth talent festival we have programs directed at policy, influencing policy, programs directed at communities, influencing communities. And in uh, those states, because of the uh, big challenge of human trafficking, we have programs also to address human trafficking, both in the form of prevention, where, where we have awareness raising and peer education in schools. We have programs directed at communities and gatekeepers in order for them to have a better knowledge of what migration and trafficking actually are so that they do not um, inadvertently traffic their children in an effort to support them to migrate. And then we naturally have programs for the general public, our billboards, our radio and television programs are directed at the general public for them to have a better knowledge of issues of gender and then issues of human trafficking. Then that's for prevention. We have um, rehabilitation and reintegration programs in order to prevent re-trafficking. And as the Nigeria South coordinator of the West African Network for the Protection of Children, GPI Edo State receives children from Nigeria South, from our network members in the 15 countries, the other 14 countries of ECOWAS and Mauritania. And we also support children from 
these countries who are found here who want to go back home to go back home our counterparts in those countries rehabilitate them when they get there just as we rehabilitate and reintegrate our own children when they get here and when i say children actually the age is extended to 25 years when gpi was born 25 years ago our vision was making the girl try to have a voice and our initial program we actually had the girl as our main and almost singular focus but as the years went by we started to program for others who were important in making a difference in the life of the girls starting with the family the school setting the health setting the general public the wider society and of course um, policy makers. We haven't done this alone. We have done this in partnership with others. We have partnered with GPI in so many activities, but the recent areas of a partnership was in the, the Danish project, which, uh, which uh, wound up earlier in the year. We have partnered with them on they are the, are the parking project as well. They have joined us in a lot of sensitization programs against the human trafficking. And of course, of recent, just uh, last July, GPI partnered with us as well to mark the 2019 World Day Against uh, Human Trafficking. Of course, like I said, the Benizona Command of NAPTIP appreciate the, the partnership of a GPI because the issue we, 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 or the issue of human trafficking is not what one individual or one agency can do alone, but they have always been there for us. We know that uh, GPI is also the chair to the West African Network. Our shelter is always open for them to bring in victims of a human trafficking within the West African sub-region. So it's a one main organization we take very serious because they are very committed in what they are doing. Of course, there are so many NGOs that are there, but it's not all of them that are focused and committed like uh, GPI. I remember very well the, one of the interventions they had at um, Esan Northeast local government area of uh, Urumi. You know, it was quite interesting to they supported uh, the, the vulnerable children in their education and some uh, poor families. They tried to improve the, the living condition of uh, families. And it was very clear that, that more of such interventions were needed. Uh, but because of limited funding, they could only, you know, cover a part of, of it. Way back in 2004, precisely, this organization, Girls Power Initiative, entered into an MOU with the Ministry of Education, specifically on the effective implementation of family life HIV education. And since 2004 till date, it has been, you know, Variety of activities bordering on training of our teachers on family life HIV education, capacity building for the students under the auspices of uh, peer education, and many other activities. We have been very fortunate in having the trust of our funders as early as 1995. We already got our first fund of 3,000 US dollars from the International Women's Health Coalition. It helped us to start. And since then, others have trusted us to also support us. We have the Ford Foundation, which for many years provided us with core funding and funded our sexual and reproductive health work. We have the MacArthur Foundation, which is still supporting us till tomorrow. We have embassies that have trusted us to execute work 
to make a difference in our various states. We have, we have the European Union, we have USAID, who have um, trusted us to, but who have, who bought into our vision and supported us in achieving our goals in the directions that coincided with their areas of interest. And we haven't done it alone. We have partners, people, uh, organizations that have partnered with us. For example, the Catholic Relief Services, CRS, with whom we worked for five years in already local governments to make a difference in the lives of vulnerable children. I um, served as the chief of party of the USAID funded SMILE project, which was implemented by CRS and supported by ActionAid International. Um, the SMILE project sought to improve the welfare and well-being of 500,000 orphans and vulnerable children spread across four states and the FCT. And these states included Edo states, Kogi states, Benue states, Nasarawa, and the Federal Capital Territory. Um, over a period of five years, from 2013 to 2018, CRS, which was a leading implementer of this award, worked with 50 civil society organizations across these five states. In Edo State specifically, CRS partnered with eight civil society organizations, and one of these organizations was Girls Power Initiative, GPI. The selection for these organizations was done through a very competitive process, and uh, GPI submitted an application to partner with CRS on this award alongside several other organizations. And GPI was successful and selected to be a civil society partner to implement the small project in Oredo local government area. We have ECPAT France, with whom we worked on the issue of prevention of human trafficking in Edo Central under the parking project. And we are even still working with them now uh, under the Don't Pay With Your Life project, supported by the France Development Institute, um, to also extend the parking project work beyond Edo Central to, to Edo North. This is wonderful work. And in other states of, uh, where GPI has presence, they have also had support, like the Communicating for Change project that is being executed in, uh, in Delta State. In uh, Cross River State, we have also had the support of several institutions. As GPI celebrates Siva Jubilee, there were congratulatory and good messages from all and sundry. I wish to congratulate the Guest Power Initiative at their 25th anniversary. They have come a long way and have contributed immensely, you know, in the areas of uh, intervention, particularly uh, from non-governmental uh, uh, sphere. Let me use this opportunity to commend uh, Professor Mrs. Benin Madnagu and Mrs. Osakwe, the founding mothers, not founding fathers this time around, founding mothers of uh, GPI, that they have been able to bring an organization that has lived and continue to live for the benefit of uh, the girl child. Let me quickly congratulate the GPI for staying up to these 25 years and uh, this, uh, this uh, jubilee or uh, this civil jubilee about to celebrate. GPI have been trying in very many, many areas. They talk of sexual abuse between children, they talk to children to avoid all this trafficking in women. They talk, there are a lot of areas. And recently, you know, the government has even killed in. We now talk about GPR 25 years on ground. It's amazing. So I want to join my voice with my director to say congratulations. It's a landmark 
silver jubilee is a long way and they have steadfastly held down. So I say well done to Mama Grace and all who are on board and to you guys who are here carrying on the train of GPI. Hello everyone, my name is Princess Abosadi. My name is Love Esso Esso Jo. My name is Amarachu Kopo. We are proud to be a GPI girl. Happy 25th anniversary. What lies ahead for Girls by Initiative? Here is the co-founder, Grace Osakwe. When you see the GPI graduates, you see a feminist who is feminist full stop, not feminist but, not feminist comma, not, fem not maybe feminist. And that's all we need if we are to address the issues, the handicaps that patriarchy has placed before us in this society. If we are to truly develop, we need every household to have a graduate of GPI. And that's our vision for GPI at 50. GPI at 50 is going to be an organization that needs no introduction anywhere, especially in the south-south zone of Nigeria. Every household should boast of a graduate of GPI. Uh, our golden jubilee, GPI at 50, I envisage that GPI would have gone beyond the south-south to also have centers in other parts of Nigeria that would have been identified then by the members and leadership of the organization. Through research, education and action Oriented programs directed towards Dear empowerment, we are GPI That's what we are Girls Power Initiative, that's what we are We are GPI, yeah. that's what we are